In Washington, D.C., the hometown Redskins were braced for a genuinely crucial game in this the NFL's 11th week. After two straight overtime defeats, the Skins were matched against the league's last undefeated team, the Minnesota Vikings, led by the peerless Fran Tarkenton. This has been a storied season for Tarkenton. After 15 years without injury, the records are beginning to fall for Francis. Last Sunday, it was John Unitas' record for most pass completions in NFL history. Just over the horizon is the league record for most touchdown passes. He was just five short of Unitas coming into this game. Most important for Fran, the Vikings have breezed through their first 10 games, winning them all, but only one against the team with a winning record, Detroit. But because the Lions lost to Los Angeles on Thanksgiving, Minnesota has already clinched their seventh central title in eight years. As for the desperate Redskins, their fans can only look in vain, perhaps in search of the perfect spiral, but they won't find it. For Sonny, number nine is gone. And alone in the spotlight and practically held together with bailing wire is Billy Kilmer, who somehow finds a way to win. Today, Kilmer must, for a loss would push Washington two games behind Dallas and St. Louis with only three to go. Thus, for the Redskins, it is a virtual Waterloo. For the Vikings, it is a stiff challenge in a season of few. And for all of us who will watch it, a rare opportunity to witness two courageous 35-year-old quarterbacks Go head to head in the NFL game of the week, Washington versus Minnesota. It seemed like old times with venerable Larry Brown in the starting backfield for Washington. Brown replacing the injured Moses Denson got the call on the game's first play as the Redskins immediately established their ground attack. Number 58, 12-year veteran linebacker Wally Hilgenberg stopped Brown from turning the corner here, but he would soon figure prominently in another Brown running play. Brown's backfield partner is, of course, Mike Thomas, number 22, who has been one of the biggest surprises of the NFL season. This typical Thomas effort was good for 34 yards to the Vikings' 42. Then Billy Kilmer hit his first pass of the day. Frank Grant's bobble forced him to go out of bounds at the two instead of in the end zone for a touchdown. With the exception of the single pass to Grant, the running tandem of Brown and Thomas had moved Washington 60 yards in five plays. And fittingly, it was their partnership that was responsible for the game's first score. From the two, Thomas Block sprang Brown wide around the left flank of the Viking defense, and Washington had drawn first blood. It was the combination of young and old, the rookie Thomas Block, the veteran Browns run that gave the Skins the lead in this vital football game. A repeat of the score shows that only number 58, Wally Hilgenberg, had a chance to stop Brown on the play. For the rest of the quarter, the focus of the game was on a rock-ribbed Redskin defense determined to atone for their team's two straight losses in overtime games. Amazingly, three of the last four Washington games went to overtime, and this has stung their defensive pride. Their goal was to corral the elusive elf wearing number 10, and throughout all but three minutes of the first half, the Washington defense succeeded. While Tarkenton has captured most of the attention this year, Chuck Foreman has quietly been pursuing an unbelievable achievement, the triple crown of football. Making like Mr. Total Offense, Foreman leads the NFC in rushing, receiving, and scoring. Yet for most of the first half, number 44 was heard from hardly at all, due to a lot of personal attention from George Allen's defense. The Skins' defense continually stopped both Tarkenton and Foreman and kept the Vikings deep in their own territory. 
And on the first play of the second quarter, it paid off when Neil Clabo's end zone punt was taken by Larry Jones, who ripped 17 yards to the Viking 28. It took Kilmer only one play, faking left and throwing over the middle to a lonesome Mike Thomas for an easy touch. The Washington lead over Minnesota rose to 14 points. As always in a Redskin game, the special teams were a vital factor as Washington's putting and ferocious tackling kept the Vikings bottled up in their own territory throughout the first half. Minnesota's first four series began respectively on their 13-6 15 and 10 yard lines. With such playbook perfect performance from George Allen's very special special teams, the Washington defense had an immediate edge which they used to great advantage. If Tarkenton, Foreman and company had hoped to use this game to sharpen skills for the coming playoffs, they were so far being sadly disappointed as the burgundy and gold constantly blooded the Viking attack. Neither the record-breaking Tarkenton nor triple crown contender Foreman could generate any offense at all. Late in the second period, Kilmer in a burst of precision passing led the skins from his own eight 92 yards into the Vikings end zone. Kilmer used everybody on this drive, Charlie Taylor and Frank Grant on slants and quick outs for 10 and 16 yards. Then when he couldn't find an open receiver, he went to Mike Thomas, an outlet man who got an additional 17 yards and put the skins in Vikings territory. Larry Brown, playing well but still a shadow of himself, ran for 14 yards right up the middle. When Kilmer hit Frank Grant for a touchdown, Washington had scored 21 points in the first half against a team that permitted an average of merely 11 for an entire game. Against Minnesota's conference-leading defense that allowed but 209 yards per game, Washington had already gained 238 yards. With the score 21 to nothing, the tone and complexion of the entire game changed dramatically. Tarkenton began to hit, and the Vikings were on the move. Starting once again from deep in its own territory, Minnesota moves steadily upfield with short and medium passes in the seams of the Washington zone. Now everything was going the Vikings way and Chuck Foreman made his first contribution of the first half. With Washington's defense loosened by the passing barrage, Tarkenton turned to Ed Marinero who took the ball straight up the middle 14 yards to the Washington three. From the three, Tarkenton rolled right, spotted John Gilliam at the back of the end zone and hit him with a cross-court pass for an apparent touchdown. Though Mike Bass' stinging tackle momentarily dislodged the ball, Gilliam obviously had possession long enough. But offensive interference was called on an unbelieving Gilliam and Minnesota lost 10 yards and the touchdown.
Gilliam was another of the Vikings' major offensive weapons stilled by the Washington defense so far. But he was anything but still in voicing his difference of opinion to the officials' ruling on this play. However, two plays later, with nine seconds remaining, Tarkenton rolled right again and speared Chuck Foreman with a pass. Minnesota at last had their first score of the day. Maestro Francis Asbury Tarkenton began a virtuoso second half performance on the Vikings first possession. Rarely throwing from a fixed position, he would complete six of seven passes on a 70-yard drive. Trailing by as much as they did, Minnesota would have to pass often. This brought number 49, Ed Marinero, into the game at running back, for he is an excellent receiver, as this catch will attest. Marinero would catch and carry for 47 yards on the drive, as Tarkenton stuck mainly with his backs who handled five of the six Tarkenton completions of the possession. No quarterback has ever used his backs better. It is a tactic that Tarkenton has perfected. And why not, when one of your backs is the elusive Chuck Foreman? In today's game, Tarkenton also was fond of going to tight end Stu Voigt, who would lead all receivers with eight catches. And this one was the only time that someone other than the center, Tarkenton himself, or his running backs, would touch the ball on this drive. Finally, from the three-yard line, Foreman scored his second touchdown of the game, and the Vikes now trail by only seven points, when not too long ago, they had been down by 21. When Minnesota quickly forced a punt, they appeared ready to take control of the game. But on the play, Fred McNeil, Ruff, Mike Bragg, and Washington had a big break that got them out of a big hole. On the very next play, the ghost of Larry Brown broke over left tackle and haunted the Vikings for 43 yards. Brown's brilliant bursts used to be fairly commonplace in Washington, but injuries have robbed him of his greatness, and this run was his longest since 1970. It would spark this drive that continued when Kilmer nailed Charlie Taylor, who in his 12th season is as great as ever thanks to the lesser pounding he has taken since moving from the burning out running back position. Taylor's catch was the last meaningful advance of the Washington drive, but it set up a field goal and a 10-point Washington lead. When the Vikings got the ball back, Tarkenton continued his great performance, but this time he changed his tactics. He completed his first pass of the half to a wide receiver, Jim Lash, for 21 yards and then even slipped in a running play with Chuck Foreman. Foreman, who leads the NFC in receiving, is also a brilliant runner. Looking at the same play from up top, we can see that there was no hole on the left, so Foreman reversed, went right and relied on his moves, one of which seemed to be made purely for his own enjoyment. Wide receivers and running plays had been added on this drive, but the key player was still Fran the Man, who was completing passes regardless of the situation in the pocket. Using a lot of play action and running around like he has since he was a rookie 15 years ago, Tarkenton completed four of five passes on this drive to bring his second half stats to 10 completions in 12 throws. This drive eventually netted a field goal that cut the Redskin lead to seven points. And one possession later, Tarkenton rolled to his right, saw lots of daylight, and rolled right into the end zone. Tarkenton's touchdown cut the lead to one point. But it stayed at one when Fred Cox missed the no longer automatic extra point. However, it hardly seemed to matter. 
for Fran Tarkenton was making the over-the-hill gang look like they were over the hill. And the Washington offense was totally unable to move against the purple defense. Part of the problem was self-inflicted, but a much greater part was inflicted by the Vikings' front four that was picking Billy Kilmer's pass pocket apart. When he wasn't being sacked, he was under heavy pressure. On this play, number 88, Alan Page, hit his arm as he threw, causing an incompletion. The next play was one of physical anguish for Kilmer when a brutal Viking pass rush put him on his back. The Redskin playoff hopes were rapidly fading under an avalanche of Northman defense. And if their own defense could not stop Tarkenton's tactics, the 1975 season would be almost over for the Washington Redskins. The Skins did manage to control Chuck Foreman's running momentarily, so Tarkenton took to the air again and used Foreman in a different way. With a third and one on the Redskin 31, Tarkenton went with Foreman, now a runner again, and Washington appeared dead. As so often happens in a short yardage situation, when and if the running back pops through the line, he can go a long way, and this is exactly what happened on this play. Notice that number 41, Mike Bass, a cornerback, was playing right on the line of scrimmage. Indeed, the whole Redskin defense was ganged along the line, and once Foreman got through that line, there was no one left to tackle him. The Vikings now led for the first time in the game, and also for the first time, Redskin partisans felt the season slipping away. With less than two minutes left, Billy Kilmer faced the brutal Viking pass rush once more, knowing that if he did not get it done this time, the Redskins were in trouble. Jim Marshall's pressure shorted Kilmer's first hope for connection, but from that point on, the pass protection held up, and Billy Kilmer completed four excruciatingly clutch passes. Fourth completion went to Frank Grant for the touchdown and Mark Mosley's point after brought back the smiles to Redskin faithful. Only 40 seconds were left when the Redskins went on top 31 to 30, but on the Viking sideline, sinister forces were at work. Fran Tarkenton was not about to give up center stage, even if it was for only 40 seconds and could ruin a happily ever after ending for the Redskins. With three totally different maneuvers, he threw a scare into George Allen and his skins. The first was a roll right, throw left to Foreman for 20 yards. Step two was a scramble forward, throw right to Brent McClanahan for 19 more. Then it was a roll left, throw left to Stu Voigt for 17 yards to the Washington 28. With five seconds left, a whole season would come down to one kick. For the Vikings, a successful kick meant a continuation of a perfect season. But that is merely frosting, for the Vikings are already playoff qualified. But for George Allen and the Redskins, a successful kick meant an almost impossible path to the playoffs and a virtual end to their season. Red Cox lined up a 45-yarder that could be the final nail in the Redskins' coffin.
Washington had survived as number 79 Ron McDole deflected the kick and saved the Redskins. The Viking dream of a perfect season had ended. But of much greater importance is the fact that the Redskins season continues. They now trail Dallas and St. Louis by one game. They have one game left with the Cowboys whom they have already beaten once. If they beat them again and finish tied with Dallas, Washington will be in the playoffs. The playoffs that just moments before seemed so far away.